Ladies and gentlemen, good evening and welcome back to our channel once again. And it is my hope and prayer that this video is going to find you guys in good health. Personally, I am fine as you can see. Kisumu is fantastic. And maybe you could also let me know where you're watching the video from. The county or the country. In case you are out of the republic. Ladies and gentlemen, General Francis Ogola was led to rest earlier today in a Lego Songa constituency in Sierra County. And yours truly was physically present to witness the general being laid to rest. And also got the opportunity to pay very close attention to the speeches and also to interact with the mourners. The truth of the matter is that the ground was charged. I don't know what would have happened if Raila Muludinga had attended that event. And I'm asking myself, why do you think Raila Muludinga decided to skip the event. Maybe Ray Ludinga got certain intelligence report that if he had attended the event, things would have turned the other side and probably would have been blamed. I don't want to get into that. Maybe I'll do another video tomorrow. But I paid very close attention to the speeches during the event. When Orengo took the microphone, when he handed it over to Oburu Dinga, and I'm going to dissect the speech by Oburo Dinga because it's the basis of this analysis. When he handed it over to Atandi. And of course, when now he invited the Azimio principles. And then when Eden Duale, in his capacity as the Minister for Defense, then now invited the, the executive, Mudavadi, Rigadi Gashagwa, and William Ruto. Let us give credit where it is due. William Ruto's speech today was more presidential. Probably he listened to my analysis yesterday and he handed over the role of answering those questions to Eden Dwale. And Eden Dwale also did a fantastic job trying to explain the whole thing about bombers, you know, the appointment and everything. That is something that William Ruto ought not to have done yesterday because he's the president of the Republic of Kenya. Riyadi Gashagwa again scored Probably Rigadi Gashagwa read the mood of the ground and decided, okay, for me, I'm just going to do my work, invite the president and let the president speak. So in this video, I want us to focus on the speech by Uburu Odinga. For those who followed the event in Alego, when Uburu Odinga was given the microphone and when he began his speech, the crowd erupted. So I want I want us to do an analysis about his speech. But before we do that, for those who are watching this channel for the first time, please take a second or two, click that subscribe button so that next time we produce a video like this, YouTube will automatically notify you. And to the subscribers, I want to continue thanking you guys for your continued support because without that support, this channel cannot be where it is. Ladies and gentlemen, without any further ado, allow me to dive in. How did Oburu Dinga begin his speech? Oburu Dinga began his speech by sending condolence message, especially that of Jaramogi Oginga Odinga family. As the chairman, listen in. Uh, Your Excellency, the President of the Republic of Kenya and His Excellency the Deputy President and the First Lady and the family of the late General Logola and all protocols observed. I stand here on behalf of my family, the family of the late Jaramogi Oginga Odinga uh, on whom I represent as the chair. <laughs> now, the late Ogola here was, uh, is our maternal uncle and our mother comes from this village. At that point, of course, for me, I knew in the morning that Red Odinga was not going to attend the event. And those who follow me on Facebook 
I updated my profile that Relo Dinga was not going to attend the event. So it was clear that Relo was not going to attend, but the family of Jaramogi was represented by Uburu Oginga Odinga. The truth is, the mother also comes from the same same village. Then Uburu Odinga then delivered condolence messages from two people. Uhuru Kenyatta and Raila Murudinga. I also come here to bring condolences of my brother, Yakom Raila Amolo Odinga, who has sent me to come because he is a bit indisposed. He could not come personally, but he has asked me to come and represent him and the family. So I also want to uh, bring condolences of Uhuru Kenyatta, the former president of Kenya, His Excellency, who has also brought his con condolences to the family. He is out of the country, but he has uh, asked me to bring his condolences to the family. Let us begin by Uhuru Kenyatta. What do you think it is Uhuru Dinga who delivered Uhuru Kenyatta's message of condolence to the family. The truth of the matter is that Raila Dinga was supposed to be the one to deliver the message. But in an ideal situation, the person who ought to have delivered Uhuru Kenyatta's condolence message was none other than William Samoy Araputo. If we were in a country where certain things are respected, because Uhuru Kenyatta is a former president, he was missing, then William Ruto, before speaking, would have said, okay, the former president is not here with us, and uh, I have his message of condolence, which I'm going to hand over to the family. Or maybe the cabinet secretary for interior, I mean, for, for, for defense, Eden Dwele, would have been the one. But why do you think Uru Kenyatta was absent? They have explained, his team has explained, that Uru Kenyatta has been out of the country for the last two weeks. Yeah? So let us go by that. Then delivered Conrad's message from Raila Amolo Odinga, which begs the question, why do you think Raila Odinga also decided to boycott this event? Or do we do a comprehensive analysis about that tomorrow so that I can get enough time to gather information here and there? And then number three, Oburu Odinga in his speech, I think based on the speeches by the, the, the general son yesterday, he decided to explain why the Luo nation are actually demanding for justice. It's not just a, a battle of demanding for saying o Ogola was killed. No, why the Luos are suspicious. Now, I would only want to mention one word after saying words of condolences and sympathies to the family. I would just like to say that the the death was an accident, but even though it is an accident, in this region we have had many such accidents. And we have also had assassination of leaders from this region. So when such things happen, we are a bit suspicious, not because of anything, but we want to know the truth. We want to know the truth. And uh, I want to ask our uncle, the general's son, not to be impatient with us. It is not because of anything. It is just because once beaten, twice shy. So we are asking for no stones to be left unturned and let us know the truth of who killed our uncle, General Ogola. He was a he died too soon, and we are a bit uh, shaken by his death. And of course, it was also clear that he had a message for the son. He had a clear message for the son about the truth. And Vuru Dinga also went further and actually explained using experience that in the past, past regimes have always used the family to try and protect. <laughs> to try and protect the government and the way Ogolasan spoke most people were like most people were like this gentleman is already being compromised and uh, you know you people know 
We lost Tom Boyer in very tragic circumstances. We lost Ouko in very tragic circumstances. And when we lost Ouko, I was part and parcel of the team of parliament which was investigating the death of Ouko. And I can tell you it was very sad because the regime at that time managed to convince the family to be very protective and not to allow people to go into detail. So young man, please do, just allow investigators to do their work. <laughs> now, with those very, very few remarks, I would once again want to wish that our uncle is uh, rested in peace in heaven and let the Almighty put him in the best place and was one of our best sons, one of the best sons from this area. We wish that he, the Almighty puts his soul in peace and let his family also rest here and we shall be with you all the times. Thank you very much. Because from the tone of his speech, he was explaining certain things which for me was not necessary. For example, why would Ogola's son decide to explain how Ruto and the father and the, uh, were working together? That was the work of Rigadi to do, Ruto to do, not him. Him he ought to have focused like yesterday, focusing on the issues of the family. But he wanted to explain certain things. Who told him to explain? So those are the issues Oburu Odinga was trying to make come out clearly. You know, Your Excellency, even up to yesterday, people were still speculating, oh, president appointed him because of this, oh, president appointed I want to clear the air with the conversations I had with my father about his time with the president. Uh, he didn't really divulge any national security issues, but generally I feel it's important to first of all clear the air. The president didn't have to appoint him first of all, and initially, he saw his competencies and decided that this is the man for the job. But very quickly, they started becoming friends and they formed a serious chemistry, which he would tell me, I have had a very good meeting with the boss. You're not telling me what it is. And it's not the president alone, the deputy president as well. But I've been asking myself, why do you think Rail Odinga missed this event and probably tasked Oburu Odinga to go and deliver his message of condolence or to speak on behalf of uh, Jaramogu Odinga family. For me, if you ask me, maybe two things only. Number one, maybe Rail Odinga wanted to say certain things, but he felt that those things he can't say them right now. You know, Raleigh Odinga wants to become the chair of the African Union Commission. So he should not be seen to be meddling in Kenyan politics. That was going to jeopardize his vision and mission. And, uh, of course, his uh, ambition. So he decided, let me send to Buru Odinga. Then Buru Odinga can say some of these things. Like demanding for investigations the way Buru Odinga did. I'm 100% sure Red Odinga would not have done it that way. Number two, maybe Red Odinga also had some prior intelligence report. Now, I want to tell you something which happened. Yesterday, UDA brigades from Nyanza mobilized their supporters from across the country, from across Nyanza, the four counties, that is Homa Bay, Kisi, Migori, Kisumu, and they camped in Alego. So in the morning, when the villagers were getting in, remember they made it very clear that the event was going to be military. So when the villagers started streaming in, we had two gates there. There was the other gate where those who were coming in with the buses, I saw several buses also from Nyakach, by the way, those who were coming in from buses, the, those UDA leader guys, they had the access. So they were just being allowed to enter. Those were the people who filled most of the part of the tent. Then, of course, the villagers were being screened. Unaingia, unaingia dani. Now, let me ask you, those who watched that event from TV, did you notice that William Ruto was really, at some point, people were chanting, 
Joey, Joey. From outside. Kind of people didn't really want to listen to the speech by the president. The truth is, inside they fill it with their people strategically. But despite that, again, they were still overpowered by the masses. And I believe that's why Rigedi Gashagwa read the mood and declined to speak. Instead, just handed over the microphone. So maybe Rayla Odinga had gotten intelligence that if he had attended this event, people were going to turn wild. And there was no way he was going to control them. And then he was going to be blamed. And that was going to risk his ambition of becoming the chair of the African Union Commission. I don't know what to think. Tomorrow I'll do some analysis about the entire event or maybe start going back to our normal analysis. Thank you and may you have a good day. Bye-bye.